okay, ma'am. <laughs> Waiting for more info. And then um, this one guy says, the secret of Vicky Lodge. And with that, a message from our one friend on the SVDO group, um, Emil. He always looks out for the weather for us. He doesn't ride motorcycle, but he's always available to find out how the routes are for us. And uh, that's the breakdown that we've got from him on the before we tackle the Swartberg Mountains. Thanks, Emil. <laughs> Uh, adapted, uh, adapted your sack so when you get on it doesn't compress as much as before that's why it feels so bloody hard yeah and maybe even on this yeah babes if i was you i would really put my gravel mode and everything on from here because we've got we've got basically four five k's and then we're on the gravel okay and we can't just stop me on we can go straight through okay okay And there's a little bit of chatting there uh, as we get ready to tackle this uh, Swartberg mountain. Uh, we were just discussing when we serviced the bikes, they put mine and Monica's seats all on the higher on the higher brackets. So Monica is not able to touch the ground much when she stops. Um, and um, and yes, the suspension of the bike also feels like it's been stiffened up quite drastically. Although I did find the people, they said they did nothing, but um, uh, but definitely it is like that on both bikes. And when we when we got home a week or two later, we reset them all back to the normal levels that um, we used to driving. So we were going to tackle this um, Swartberg Mountain in a sit with a situation where there's not much room for error when it comes to stopping. that introduction by Mozart we welcome you guys to the fourth part of what a great surprise and adventure we had Yeah, we're just starting the Prince Albert side of the Swartburg Mountain side, and um, as you can see, the 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 gravel looks fantastic on this side. Uh, actually, it's 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 perfect. The weather is fantastic. Um, it's not really it's it's not really any difficulty on the this the lower parts. There's a little bit of a river crossing here, but. Um, solid underground so it's, it's really not an issue and um, the water is minimal there although it rained the previous night as you can see it's a bit it's a bit damp a little bit damp but it's not nothing nothing serious Now, it's like I said, we've, um, me and Monica have done this pass quite a few times. I don't really know exactly how much times, but we've done it with our, with our sim adventure bikes at least a few, three, four, five times. And I think this is about our third or fourth time that we're doing it with the Africa Twins. The pass itself is, on, especially on the um, Prince Albert side here where we're riding now, it's very good and, and, and the road condition is nice, especially the beginning of the pass, the first five to ten k's of the pass. I would say it's easy, it's good to ride on, you can do it with any vehicle. The whole pass you can actually do with any vehicle. The, the only problem that, that, that will creep in with this pass, which I'll show you guys as we get further, is actually the, the narrow spaces between... Um, the turns like so when you're making a tight bend turn there's only room for one vehicle and um, you can't see each other coming along so one has to respect respect the pass and although it's 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 about 25 to 30 k is the pass you get the odd person or two that's come speeding down this pass without actually planning or thinking of the next car and um, luckily I don't think there has been major accidents. You, 
believe it or not, just recently um, when it was raining so badly, a truck made it all the way to the top of this pass and then couldn't take the turns. I don't know how they got the truck down or what it did to get the truck driver out, but I mean, um, just shows you. So if a truck sees it, it's a, a sees chance to drive on this pass, which I don't think they should ever see it do it. Um, but you know, with the Google explanation nowadays, I can understand how they rock up doing this. But if you look at this bike coming along here, the speed is traveling on. Now, luckily he came across our bikes. It's easy for him to pass. But if that was a car coming his way and he was coming around this bend at the speed that he was going, there's only going to be one winner in that battle. And um, at the end of the day, it one has to just think logically so what I'm actually saying is uh, just um, as you take the corners just don't take it for granted it's going to be open so handle it with caution and you should be fine the other thing that gets to me on this pass sometimes is, is the height. Uh, me and Monica are both scared of, of heights. And as you can see, as you watch us riding, you'll see on as we're going up, there's no room actually for any pulling over. There's no room to put your feet down, even as the road slants towards the ledge there. So um, We've been blessed in that sense that we only got one or two cars, but uh, we managed to pass them on a, still on a, on a reasonably good section. But I sometimes think to myself, is it worthwhile driving these roads um, if you stand a chance of encountering one of these cars around a bend? That can really, really be a problem. Now, if we have to think if it's worthwhile, yes, I definitely think it's worthwhile. It's it's something you don't do every day, and it just takes you out of that comfort zone that you come from. It's a challenge. It's almost like the challenges you do climbing Mount Everest and all those things. It's my own little challenge. And here we actually see a car coming down the road. Now, you can see what I mean by... He's coming down, he should stop and give us space. Just look how little the space is. And um, both me, Monica, and Koki have to pass this guy. Koki actually had to stop for him to come through. But because he's coming down, he should actually stop because he's a car and give us the right of way. That's the way I understand it. But in any case, no, almost done. That was still a reasonably fine section to pass him, but. If it was another car, there's no way they could pass each other. Someone would have to reverse to somewhere or get to go somewhere. So I don't know. But yeah, it's like, yeah, you can really see how, the cli how we're climbing. It's getting pretty high uh, where we're going. And yet this is far from the summit. Um, the way this mountain works is actually you climb. You start off in a reasonably flat for about 10, 10 kilometers. Then you get about 10 kilometers of climbing like this with another five or so k's going down to a flat area which is where we're going to stop now in a in a few minutes time and that's how that's that's how this pass works it goes from it goes from a climb to a flat section in the middle and then it goes to another climb which will take you to the summits and then from the summits you'll go back down to the outswardern side of the of the mountain but you, can, you guys can see how good the gravel is at the moment. It's it's not bad yet at all. It's um, it's actually perfect for our bikes. It's just the uh, the corners when you're taking them like here. Yeah, it's there's very little room for error. You can't see anything coming from the other side, and um, yeah, you've got to maybe rely on dust or anything like that. But there's nothing, and we're just pushing along. 
someone just looking onto this will actually think, yeah, but why would someone do this, you know, and um, a ride like this, and you know what's you know what's special about a ride like this? It's it's the thing that me and my wife do it together. We we while we're riding, we're feeling exactly the same, seeing exactly the same things, and and it's really special. It's something it's something of a hobby that that we've actually found that we both enjoy very much and. Um, after the ride, we we'll, we always talk about the ride and how, what was special and so on, and it's just a, it's just a fantastic feeling to do this. Another thing on this trip that's also very very special for us is we're doing it with a friend which we've just met. Well, I've known him for almost like three years every every year he maybe puts two comments on a on a on a on a, on a vlog and that's it and um and we mentioned it uh, and we and in one of those vlogs i mentioned to him that we should consider riding with each other because um he always had such great advice on he, on the on great advice to give on the comments and i immediately thought um there's something special about this guy in the sense that um, I don't even know how old he is. I didn't know anything about him basically till as we spoke further and further and as the moments got closer to us uh, meeting each other to ride, he gave me info on himself and so on and so on because believe me, I won't just invite anyone to my house. I mean, it takes, I mean, I told my one friend on um, that I game with, we've been gaming for something like 30 years maybe already on, a, on, on, on computer games. He's, he's, um, well, I wouldn't say 30 years, let's say 20 years, right? And um, he's maybe now about 36, nearly in his 40s. And, um, I've always told him he's welcome to come visit me and he's never ever came. I know him as Doc but his real name is, um, I won't actually mention it online, but um, I call his game name is Doc and we played together for 13 Cavalry in first person shooter games over across a, a genre of games, right? But till today we're still playing together and we always talk and I told him just the other day because he said, yeah, you know, like, um, it's weird that you'll invite someone that you've never met and I told him um, Yeah, the, the, the thing is with me. I can count on my one hand Strangers I've invited to my house in, 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 the, in, the, in my lifetime, so it's not a thing that I do just straight away, but you sometimes one just gets a feeling that 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 this person has got something to offer to you in your uh, in your life and and with with cocky it definitely is his wisdom his um his wisdom his personality his down to earth his intelligence um he's just a fantastic guy and monica will vouch for me she's just as impressed with this uh, with this guy cocky matika johan cock and um, we've spoken to his wife Liz and um, just this week we they will be coming here right back uh, home in uh, Joburg from this long trip that he's been most probably three weeks on a motorcycle we came down to us went off to Lang uh, Langebaan did a course there then went back home and he's got family obviously also here in the Western Cape it's it's one hell of a trip we're talking at least I'm roughly guessing maybe 3000 kilometers if not more that this gentleman has traveled and um and what a pleasure it was to meet this man remarkable man and like i said we spoke to him just this week his wife does apparently walking i don't know it's like almost like this walking that they do the camino or something if you guys know what what it is and um yes maybe we're gonna see them in the two weeks time and he's bringing a smaller a smaller bike with which he's trailing down and uh, yeah, if my phone has a message in the background, I won't really edit it, uh, uh, edit it out. I'm, al I'm alone at home now. My phone just keeps on ringing all the time. I know I can put it on silence, but some of these calls are very important. But getting back to the thing, it, like I said, um, Koki, thank you so much for coming out this way, for spending the time with us and, and really giving us a part of your side of life, which the eye opener in the sense that you're a fantastic guy and we will definitely ride again me you and monica and we are planning 
me and Monica have always said it, but Monica doesn't have too much time, but Cookie actually fits the bill well. Maybe me and him, or, and if Monica's available, we might do a trip to Namibia or Botswana, uh, Namibia run a, a one of those trips if, he's, if he rides 3,000 kilometers in three weeks. I don't know if my body can handle it, but I'd like to, I'd like to challenge and try it. Yeah, we basically hitting the halfway mark, which is basically um, the turn off to the hull is on our right hand side. And the, the hull, for those of you who don't know the hull, the hull is actually a place that's existed for many years. And on this turn, we're talking about uh, to run about 35 kilometers down to the hull. And this 35 kilometers we'll see on the warning boards right over there. It will take you around about two to two and a half hours to get down there. The road, the road is very, very steep. In some places, very bad too. And um, you can do it in a normal car, but I wouldn't advise that. I it's probably the least you should do it is in a is in a bucky or a or a pickup for those people that don't know what a bucky is. Just a water break and a smoke break. Oh, this is to the hull. That's to the hull now. That's 30 k's to the hull. Eh? And it's th that's 30 k's to the hull that I way. That job. And they reckon about two hours drive. Two and a half at least. Yeah, because it's a park road. Yeah. The road looks like that most of the way, uh, Cocky. Me and Monica's done it already three quarters. We've actually done it with a bucky. But most of the road looks like that. Right. But this, the, the guy can't say that's a walk in a park, that's a tough ride. That's yeah, yeah, no, it's a beautiful, the Swartberg is lacquer. Yeah. No, I think, you know what, and maybe he was just kind. He encouraged us. Uh, he says, near the Swartberg is by a mock look at us. Not saying we actually went through there, yeah. you know. Yeah. No ways. This is technically a Much ride. harder. It doesn't mean it's a cuck ride. Yeah. And you can't really even go uh, anywhere in there. And but but we can see there's two points. There's two vantage points up there. They're close to each other, about a kilometer from each other. Okay, it's up to you. And one is better than the other one, and the other one is worse than the other one. But let's just see. I always find the first one on the other side, which is the second one from us, yeah. is the better one. Well, let's go there. But let's and just see. But if we miss the first one, yeah. and we get to second, and you say, now this is even worse, then we stuck. And they've got, they both got boards saying that it's a summit, but they're in definitely different heights. Yeah, so I don't know how that works. <sighs> let's do it. Let's do it, Koki. Yeah. Oh. I just can't wait trying the bike on a lower Tell city. Me on the DCT, can huh? you force it to remain in that particular gear? Uh, yeah, you can. If you feel you're going too fast, you just pedal it down. Look here, you see, you, you see but, this. But if you feel, for example, for hill, you want to stay in second, and it mustn't when you get it down slightly go to third because net, so if you have this, grrr, grrr, now in that flat part. Would it not go to three and then when you want to climb again? Or can you can you say for this next three turn backs going up? Yeah. I want to block it in a gear. Yeah. But you see, uh, the way we we let it choose because it's very intelligent in the choosing. It's just sometimes when it's going downhill, it wants to leave it deep it onto four. Yeah. And now you see a turn coming and it's too much, so there you can bring it down, but me and Monica really touch that stuff. Oh, so on the brakes it will go tick, tick down, like yeah, yeah, yeah. car. If we brake, there's a car coming from the hull, eh? But he, hopefully he's going that way, he is going that way. Yeah, no, he's going that way. Back to Prince Albert. If you want to come this way, let him pass. Yeah, but he, uh, he is going to Prince Albert. Okay. Okay. Remember to set all your stuff back right back to the ABS everything. Oh. And once again guys, it's one thing I always tell anybody, even if you're riding by car, just that little 30 minute break, or not 30 minute break, but let's say a 10 minute break away from the route and just to gather your thoughts it's so much it's so much, it's so, it does you so good as a rider it, it just 
puts you back in a good frame of mind and what's evident on that stop really if you guys notice is the wind picking up where we've had absolutely no wind here in the middle it started to pick up and um, I want you guys to actually notice as we get at the top the wind is becomes gale force strong so it just shows you how quick weather changes and how quick things can change from one side of the mountain to the other side of the mountain and that's why you've actually got to have a good skill set when you're riding because um, yeah, Cocky will actually vouch for this when he when he drove from us back to Cape Town. He actually had to stop for two days. So bad the weather was that you even had snow on Table Mountain. And but I mean, us bikers are used to this uh, quick changes in weather patterns. The next change that also took place is the um, the type of gravel that we were riding on suddenly changed from the being that red nice solid underground uh, um, track to um, where the, it looks like the municipal vehicles must have come and dumped a shitload of gravel that's almost like marble size a little bit bigger than those big marbles all over the place and when it came to the other side of the mountain I want you guys to notice how hectic it was so the traction on our wheels were pretty bad and and especially going into tight corners actually quite dangerous and with that guys this is where i will basically comment as little as possible uh, i want you guys just to enjoy the last minutes of the ride this video was basically made almost with no cuts it's almost a pass from the one side to the other and um yeah you guys can just see how quickly the weather changed on the other side we did we did stop for a while so there will be a bit of a stop there and then we come off the pass but uh, monica will be riding in front after we stopped and i just want you guys to just look on her left and right and see the the beauty and the and the ruggedness and the challenge and just think about it while mozart plays in the background and we'll catch you guys in our next video. We'll most probably be only releasing again in two, three weeks time. We're working quite hard and we're trying to organize more rides um, to do maybe with my son. Uh, they don't ride motorbike, but maybe doing something with them, meeting us up somewhere or a cousin or so, or maybe even Cook and his wife. Um, yeah, so um, I hope you guys enjoyed this four, four piece series and I can also let you guys know the important thing on this uh, thing of the series here was part three of the cat Josie which uh, my wife has finally made up her mind to take the cat in and Carl will be bringing the cat in on Monday to us from which we will be giving it a one month trial to see how the cat will accommodate by us. Um, Shame my wife says he was basically in tears when he heard we will take the cat from him and he knows the cat's going to be in a good house so we will be seeing him on Monday and I'll also um, add him in one of our little videos um, to show you how he's doing and um, and let's see how it goes but uh, like I said thank you for following the vlog all of you that did um, and um, we really appreciate it and tell your friends Tell our family members more than welcome and we will we will you know keep on doing this because this is what we enjoy doing. I don't think I'm climbing off. I don't think I'm climbing off. I'll be honest with you guys. I'm gonna need to climb off, but I don't think I'm climbing off in the wind. I'm just going to tell you how my swan stop here.
what you someone tell the marbles. Where is marbles? No, it's, it's marbles. coming up. The marbles is coming up. Oh, so this is not the marbles. Yet. No. You see how the bike is going? It's a big. I don't know how your bike gets it right, Cookie. Imagine a bike had just been blown over. Eh? Carefully. Yeah, because look, this is unnatural. It, it's, it's, it's such a heavy bike, it should not be even be touched by the wind. The wind is like kicking that it around. It's very risky because we deliberately chose it. But why must you choose such a. I can virtually park anywhere. We can't. I just park. I just put foot near and my bike stands. Oh, we can't. Um, this um, that's we've had, we've that's always. Good. I mean, I don't know. I wonder how many. Not but, like, but this is nothing. This to me is like level. Yeah. But we've always had this problem with this bike. It's you like mentioned it on the wheel. What we must do, go on to YouTube and say setting of sides and maybe there's screws that you can set it. Yeah, because I've been thinking of getting another side stand in the sense that bends out like that. The, no, that's a stop. That is the yeah. stop, the factory, it must just, something must just, I mean it's got so many bolts, I wonder whether it can't twist like so that it's very good. No, no, it bugs me, this part of the ride bugs me because my personal opinion, my personal opinion, if we were going that way and we stop, no problem because the wheel's going that way, but if we're coming down this way. But if it's too sharp, then you struggle to tilt it over, back again. Yes. Because of the weight, it's it's just enough. Just enough not to fall. Yeah. Well, that's bound to happen now again with the tilting over. It's going to be, and with the wind, it's it's too much weight coming down on the side there. But you can see, um, you'll see if the wind comes, it will push it right up, and uh, it's it's weird. Weird for me as well. Yeah. Yeah, well we got this last little bit, uh, don't write it off, it's a, it's a tough 5 to 10 k's out of here now. Just the first 5 is tough, say till about around the first or second bend there, and then, then you get a smooth out coming out. Perhaps you'll have to go get Kevlin's money by, by, by uh, um, so, uh, Okay, let's first get Monica up. I'm gonna hold my bike. Yeah, but you, you were gonna wait for him. You're just gonna get up, hold your brake, take away your 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 handbrake. I'm gonna go first. Okay. Yeah. You can hit your handbrake up on. In your gravel mode of foot unsit. Okay. Put your gravel mode and everything on. Let that car come through. Ah, 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 ah,